Today I'm going to show you 10 carnivore meals all using just one pan. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. This way of cooking has helped me to lose 145 pounds and counting. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you check out some of my other videos and returning viewers, welcome back. I hope you like today's video. Hi everyone. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I have been cooking all my meals without using any fancy electronic devices, gadgets, or anything. Uh, you may be shocked because I am kind of the gadget queen of my family. I love my air fryer. I love my instant pot. I love my slow cooker. I love my sous vide. But all of these meals that you're about to see were made with mostly a cast iron frying pan. This one here. I also used uh, a baking pan in one of them, but it could have very well been done in here as well. And, and I think a pot for one of them to boil some eggs. That is it. And how this video came about is that I had some comments because I do love my air fryer. And I've had some comments from people that have asked me if I could show how to cook some of the things that I love without using an air fryer um, or an instant pot or, or whatever, because not everybody has that in their kitchen. Not everybody has room in their kitchen for these extra appliances um, or the budget. So whatever the reason is, there is um, a way to cook everything that I have eaten in the last couple of years on this channel, it's all doable with simple pots and pans. If you have a stove, it's really all you need. Uh, and so I wanted to show that to you um, and, and also provide a few different ideas for meals that are meat-based carnivore meals. So uh, one thing I do want to say about the cast iron pan, these are fantastic for all kinds of carnivore cooking. If you haven't got one, consider getting one. I see them all the time at uh, thrift stores, for example. If you can possibly get one that has this handle, like a double handle. So we've got, you know, the regular handle, plus we have this little thing. Um, it is so much easier for taking something from the stove, putting it in the oven to bake. Um, and taking it out of the oven. Otherwise, you're having to, you know, do that. And, and I find it much easier to do that. So it's just, just, a, little, just a little tip if you can, if you can find that one. Um, I will link one down below that is just like this one. This is a 10 inch cast iron pan and gotten great use out of it. So, um, you know, at first I thought, oh, I'm going to be roughing it, <laughs> but it was, it's actually a lot, in many ways, it's a lot simpler to cook like this. Do I love my air fryer? Absolutely, 100%. I love my air fryer. I would hate to live without it. I'd hate to live without my sous vide. I'd hate to live without my Instant Pot, but they are not necessary to be successful on carnivore or keto. So I want to really stress that this is all you need, a basic pan. It can be used for baking in the oven. It can be used on the stovetop. There is, there's almost nothing that you can't cook with this. The, you know, just very rare, very rare item or recipe that you can't cook with this pan. If you're a carnivore, you don't need anything else, to be honest. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm giving up my favorite appliances. Sorry, uh, I, I just love them too much. So with all that said, let's just get started and let's watch these meals. This is a pretty typical first meal of the day for me, about a half a pound of meat. Uh, in this case, I've got leftover steak and some leftover hamburger meat. Mix it with eggs in a pan. And that's it. That, that's, that's a full meal. 
Okay, so I'm making some pan-seared steaks. I'm doing it in the cast iron pan. You just basically put some salt and pepper on them and then I am putting them in the fridge so that they can age. You can do that for 24 hours or even just a few hours. Once they're ready, heat up your frying pan on the stove so that it's nice and hot. I'm melting some tallow here and when it's nice and hot, put them in and sear for two minutes on each side. So that includes the, uh, the fat cap. Try to get the fat cap nice and crispy. Now I was going for rare here. If you like medium rare or medium, you would wanna sear that longer. And then you just slice and enjoy. One thing that I like to do to keep my carnivore meals really simple is on the weekend or you know whatever day is convenient, I will cook a whole bunch of eggs. You can do that in your instant pot. You can do that in one of those little dash cookers. I have one of those. You can simply do it in a pot of water. Just put it on the stove and boil it to however you like it. You can make them soft boiled, hard boiled, medium. I kind of like mine in the medium range. It all depends on what you're going to do with them, but pre-cook a bunch of eggs and use them in your meals. If you don't have quite enough steak, you can put a couple of extra eggs on there just to get your protein in. So today I'm going to make a simple meal that I make quite often when I'm busy. Today it's going to be a can of salmon. This literally, if you have boiled eggs in the fridge already, this meal literally takes five minutes. I need to peel my eggs. This meal gives me about half my allotted protein for the day. I'm trying to shoot for 150 grams of protein every day. This does it. Here's how I like my eggs, just a little jammy in the middle. And I just cut them in half and surround my can of salmon. I like to put some mayo on there. I use the chosen foods, avocado mayo or the keto mayo if I can get it. It's harder to find. It uses MCT oil instead of avocado or I make my own and I just plunk a tablespoon on top of the salmon. Sometimes I will just mix my egg in with the salmon together. It makes one big salmon egg salad. It's very good and a sprinkling of Redmond's salt on the eggs. That is it. 75 grams of protein in here. I'm off to my desk to work. This is a perfect eat at my desk meal. <laughs> I hope you are enjoying the video so far. As you can imagine, it takes several days of filming and editing and a lot of work to put into a video like this, which is why I want to thank our sponsor today, Element, for helping with this video. Element is a very delicious electrolyte drink that I have been using for a couple of years now, and I use it to balance my electrolytes. Otherwise, I do get nighttime leg cramps and it is so far the only thing I've been able to use to reliably solve that problem. Um, it contains a science-backed formula of a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Right now Element is offering to my viewers this eight flavor sample pack with every purchase from their website. You just need to use my link below which is on the screen and in the description. It's drinkelement.com slash ketogenic woman. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash ketogenic woman. This will be added to your cart when you make a purchase. I hope you enjoy, or you can share with a friend. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video today. These are frozen salmon fillets that I bought from Costco. They come in about seven ounce uh, packages like this. We're going to bake them in the oven. I'm making two. You could use also a cast iron pan for this. It doesn't need a special baking pan. I'm setting the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, putting a little bit of Redmond salt on top, and they are going to go in the oven for 25 minutes. Mm. 
they should be perfectly cooked. I like to have other meats on my plate. I've got half a can of cod livers and one leftover chicken thigh and the salmon is really good with a teaspoon of butter kind of mixed into it. There's my dinner. I'm going to make crab cakes. This recipe is identical to my salmon waffles. You beat one egg, put in a can of crab, mix it up, add in some Dijon mustard, a few drops of Worcestershire, some Old Bay seasoning, Redmond salt, and a teaspoon of gelatin powder. That is what will make it crispy. Heat up some tallow in the pan and form two patties with a spoon. After a couple of minutes, you can flip it over and then let it finish cooking covered with a lid. I like to include other meats like chicken thigh, cod livers to make a complete meal. Okay, so I'm ready for my first meal of the day today. I'm going, it's super simple, just a pan and in the oven. I'm just gonna set my oven to broil. What I have here is one pound of ground beef. Um, it's, it's lean, lean is the most common ground beef uh, around here where I am, unless you uh, want to get extra lean. There's, uh, that's the second most common. Using lean ground beef, I'm just going to plunk it into the pan. Try to make an even layer here. This is perfect if you do not have an air fryer. I usually make my crispy ground beef that I want to have a little bit of a char on it. I love making it in the air fryer, but this particular video is all about simple methods, no extra devices. I'll show you how to do it in the oven. So that is pretty good. If you have a bigger pan, this would be a good meal prep. You could put two pounds of ground beef if this was slightly larger, but this size of pan holds uh, one pound quite nicely. I am just going to use salt. This is Redmond's salt. If you are able to tolerate other seasonings, by all means, add in your favorites. Okay, so this is uh, gonna go in the oven. We have it on broil and it's, but I'm putting it on the lower rack or a middle rack, just not right underneath the broiler. We'll check it in 10 minutes. Okay, so here it is at the 10 minute mark, not crispy yet because we're going to mix it around and put it back in. You can use a spatula or a fork. You can see inside the meat is still pink at 10 minutes. You could drain this off if you want to get it even a little more crispy. Um, I'm going to drain mine off at the end though. Some people do keep the juice in, but I don't really like rendered ground beef fat when it's warm. It kind of gives me a, a little bit of tummy issues. So I will be pouring it off into a jar when I'm done and using it for other things. Okay, so this is going to go back in for another 10 minutes. Okay, it's been another 10 minutes. Let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, that is looking crispy on top. Now you could let it go a few more minutes if you want it even crispier. Okay, first I'm going to drain off the fat and juices and I will save this in a jar because it will be useful. So I'm going to be eating about half of this. This was a pound. I want to eat about half a pound. So I'm just gonna put it out here and I'm going to save the other half for a different recipe, which of course I will share if it's one that I haven't done before. Um, now this is not enough of a, I, cause I only eat two meals a day. So this by itself is not enough. I will be adding a can of salmon and a tablespoon of mayo. That is my first meal of the day. So I'm going to make meatloaf in a cast iron pan. Uh, two pounds ground beef, mix in two eggs, 
half a cup of lightly crushed pork rinds. You want the chunks to be, uh, like you want it to be chunky, not fine like pork panko. Half a cup of bacon bits. A teaspoon of Redmond's fine salt. A few drops of the Worcestershire sauce. I'm setting the oven to 375. Just mix it loosely together. Press it down into the pan. This is a 10 inch pan that I have. And it is going to bake for 45 minutes. Just making sure that it's well done. Should be about 165. Cut it into however many servings. I did four here. It's really delicious. Okay, I'm going to make these delicious pork chops in the pan and oven method. First, I just sprinkle with kosher salt and black pepper. I have the oven set to 450. I'm going to sear the pork chops in tallow at high heat, get a nice brown on them. Probably will do this for about one minute per side. One to two minutes per side at most. Depends on how thick your pork chops are. Then they go into the oven at 450 for five minutes and then let them rest for a few minutes. Delicious dinner. Yum. yum, yum. Okay, I'm going to make some uh, leftover meat egg drop soup. You can use any meat for this, any leftover meat you have. Just cut it up. I happen to be using the leftovers from the meatloaf uh, that you saw elsewhere in this video. So I just throw them in the pot. Uh, stir them around a bit to brown them, but it's probably not even really necessary. Once the meat is browned, I add some hot water. I usually would add broth, but I didn't have any broth. Like you could put in bone broth or any homemade broth you have. Even just some water will do. And I let that get to a simmer. And then I beat an egg and drop the beaten egg into the pot and you have egg drop soup. This is really satisfying and delicious. You could of course add some seasonings and spices if you like. I usually just add salt. This is a flank steak. You want to note which way the grain is running and then poke a few holes in it towards that uh, just to tenderize it. I rub on some kosher salt and white pepper. Uh, turn the pan up high, melt some tallow. When the pan is super hot, uh, throw your flank steak in there. Flank steak is very lean, so it's best to cook it medium rare or, or even rare. So about two minutes per side, depending on how thick it is. Be sure to turn your fan on. Then you also want to let it rest for 10 minutes. I usually cover it. If it's big, you can cover it with a tented foil or something like that, but the lid did the job. Then you want to slice against the grain, like across the grain, I should say, 
into thin slices. This is quite delicious, this meat. It's one of my favorites. I feel like I don't make it often enough. Because it is so lean though, you want to make sure that you serve it with a side of butter or some other fat or make sure that your other meal of the day or other meals of the day have more fattier cuts. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, some new meal ideas, I hope, and some confirmation that you don't need fancy gadgets and appliances to do this way of eating. So I hope you got some new ideas from this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching today. Episode 307, scene M06, no sound. <laughs> Episode 307, <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't say the title before. Okay. Episode 307, five days of carnivore meals, scene M06, Mark. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the oven. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the oven. This is the waiting for the oven dance. I'm going to do all kinds of things with it, including smack it over your head. Did I say that already? I'm going to do all kinds of things with it, including smack, smack, smack it over your head. Did I say that already?